This is going to be lecture one of your AutoCAD introduction class. All right, so the things that we're going to go over in this one is going to be some basic blueprint reading, some drafting symbols, some tendencies and behaviors that AutoCAD tend to have, and we're going to start doing some data input, so how to put things into AutoCAD and make AutoCAD react back to you. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off with some blueprint reading. Some of the basic symbols that you're going to typically see, it's going to be the diameter symbol. You're going to see some depth symbols sometimes. It may have a couple of examples with those in them or out. But you can see that some of these symbols, you'll have a counter bore or a counter sink. You can have an arc link. The radius one is one that we're going to see a lot of. And once we get into doing some tolerancing, which I think is an intermediate class, you'll see the plus or minus. But anything that you see in brackets typically are reference dimensions. They're there just for someone's reference. Don't hold anything to it. I do have some additional symbols. Uh, they will be located down there in the other things at the in, the in the bottom of this course. Or you can click on this icon and I think it will take you down there to it. If it doesn't, let me know and I'll go ahead and fix that. Okay, some of these examples, and this is kind of what it's showing you, some of those symbols. So you can see that this is a depth symbol. And you can see that it's telling me I got a hole here and it goes down a distance of 20. Here's also a counter bore. So it's just telling me that I have this whole counter board. And then the depth of that counter bore is going to be 3. Okay. Some other examples of these symbols it has a radius command. I mean, it has a radius dimension. So you can see that that is that radius that is calling out here. Some other radiuses. Uh, the diameter of these circles in the front, that's what you're seeing here. In most of your AutoCAD drawings, you're going to see some different types of line types. Uh, you're going to have some center lines, some phantoms, some hidden lines, and also some continuous lines. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples of these. Anytime you see a, a cylinder line, it shows a cylindrical object. And that's kind of what we're explaining here. So you can see that this is a pipe. And we have a center line going through it to represent that that is a cylindrical pipe. Okay, next thing we have is phantom lines, and anytime you see phantom lines, they're usually going to be your real thick lines that you use to, that you see on an AutoCAD drawing. Usually these are going to be lo used to uh, locate what a section is, so you can have, that'll be your cutting line of a section, but like I say, the most important thing will be, is that these will be really thick lines. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is the hidden lines are used for lines that you can't, I mean, or objects or something that you just can't see. So if you notice that in this object, I may have some holes or something drilled, or you may have another surface or an edge or somewhere that you can't see in the front view, but the hidden lines will show that that's what's going on here. So you can see that I have some other objects or some holes drilled into this, this object, and that's what the hidden lines are representing. And the continuous line is typically going to be your most used line. That just shows your major object lines. So anytime you draw something, you're usually going to keep that on the continuous line type. Okay, let's look at some of the AutoCAD tendencies and behavior. All right, so some of the things that we're going to use the input into AutoCAD, the first thing we're going to use is going to be probably our keyboard. On our keyboard, our function keys are going to be used for many different of these objects. And the ones that I have highlighted in red are going to be typically the ones that I'm going to use a lot. So, for example, once we start getting into figuring out what these O snaps are, we can help, we can hit the uh, function key 3 on our keyboard, and that will control and turn them on and off. You got your ortho mode, which will be a real big one that we're going to use a lot. And you have some of these other ones that are going to be really important to you. One other one that I should have highlighted, but I don't, will be this grid one. I typically don't work in the grid, and that's going to be my function key 7. I tend to turn that off. So that's what I use for that one. Some of our other special keys, you're going to have the escape button that will end your commands. You're going to have this at symbol, and we're going to look into that more here when we get into our data input. And we also have a, a, a less than sign, which is going to stand for our angle. Remember that you have to use the shift button when you're using the at symbol or the comma. Okay, we got a space bar. And then we're also going to use the apostrophe, and that's a transparent. That's going to allow us to be in a command and then 
utilize another command while we're in that command. Other things that we do have, the input in AutoCAD is going to be our mouse. So anytime you hear me say click or left click or, or pick, I'm referring to the left button. So that's what I'll be referring to. If you want to scroll in or out, that's going to be done with your wheel. You can also hold your wheel down and that will be a pan button. And one other thing that you can do with this middle mouse wheel button, if you double click it, it will zoom the extents. So it will zoom to all the objects that you have created on your drawing. Anytime you use a right click, that's tend to gonna put up a, a menu for you in AutoCAD. And now notice that this is for people that use a traditional mouse. If you switch this over to a left-handed mouse, all of these just switch over to the other side. So the left click will become your right click and vice versa. Okay, the user interface in AutoCAD, these are gonna be some of the things that we're gonna use. So by far, we're gonna use a lot of things on this ribbon. This is gonna be our graphics area. And this has the grid on, but like I say, I usually hit F7 and turn this grid off. We have the command line, which is gonna be super important that we're gonna use. At the status bar, we're gonna use some things along that as well. Um, the quick access panel is really useful if you wanna save or print. And we're gonna also use this application menu. We can also do some saving and things of that nature. If you wanna know what drawing you want, or if you have multiple drawings, they're gonna be listed along here. The view cube is something that we're not going to use. We'll see that if you take the AutoCAD advanced class and the navigation bar is another thing that's going to have some commands on it and I will show some things of, of that. Also going to have some crosshairs and we're going to use those and that's going to kind of tell us where we are. And the UCS, this coordinate system, that usually shows us where 0 comma 0 is. Okay, let's kind of look at some data input stuff. So some different ways we got to put data in, anytime you see dynamic or, or see refer, reference as dynamic, that means that you have total control over it. So that means that you'll be able to click and, and input it in just by you using it. You got the absolute coordinate, and we're going to explain what that is, and I'll explain you if you can kind of remember back to some of your Cortesian coordinate systems. You got some relative, polar, and then we're going to use the ortho mode. Okay, and most of the demos that you're going to see me use, well, and actually all the demos you're going to see me use, you're going to see a red dot that's going to usually follow my mouse around, and that's just nothing, just showing you where my cursor is on the screen. Next thing, if I do a left click, it's going to appear as a yellow square. My right click is going to appear as a diamond, and all of these are going to be in your lecture demos, so I have a demo just showing you how my cursor input is. Okay, the dynamic mode and method and once again these are all in your lecture notes it's just you're gonna pick anywhere you want so I can click here 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 and once I use the line command and just wherever I click it a line will appear the Cortesian system if you remember back it's just nothing more than a plotting or a graphing system so for example if I wanted to locate a point at 1 comma 1 that's kinda where that point is you know, you got 0, 4. So you can use this as a reference if you can kind of remember back to what the Cortesian system is. It's just nothing more than a plotting. Always remember that the X come first and the Y come second. And we're going to use that a lot in some of our drawings that we're going to create. Okay, so when we're using the absolute method, the first thing we want to make sure is that function key 12 or our dynamic input must be turned off. If it is not then you will not be able to use the absolute method. So make sure that when you're using that, the first thing you want to check is that your function key 12 is turned off. And then this kind of goes through the steps that you're going to use to do that. So you'll go through and turn your dynamic input off. You'll use the line command. And then you can just type in these numbers. And the bottom one is this C enter button. And if you go through the demo, it'll tell you that that is the actual close function. So it'll get you back to this original point. The relative deals with the at symbol, so remember when we're using the at symbol, we can use that. You can turn the dynamic input back on the function key 12, and it will do this little at symbol for you, but I always like to tell people to get in the habit of typing it in, that some commands don't do it, and some commands do. So I just always make it a habit of using that. So once again, you can turn your function key, I mean your dynamic input back on, which is going to be function key 12. 
Polar is going to deal with the angles, and in AutoCAD, anytime you're dealing with angles, the furthest point pointing to the right is going to be at zero, and in a counterclockwise rotation, they get positive. So all of these are going to be just different angles of how AutoCAD sees the polar. So if I wanted to make a, a line or, or I want to put some at a certain distance at an angle, I can go ahead and put them at 45, or I can rotate a line going around at these degrees. Okay, here's an example of the polar input method, and like I say, I have a demo that's showing you how to go through all these steps, and they're located underneath your lecture demo. Once again, I highly recommend that you use the add symbol as opposed to letting the dynamic input do it for you. But this is just a quick overview of how, how that's being done. Once again, the ortho mode is going to be your most easiest way of doing things if you have nice straight lines. The most important thing that you need to know here is if you're using ortho mode is to make sure that your function key 8 is turned on. So once you're using function key 8, it'll create nice sharp straight lines for you. And then all you have to do is point it in a direction, give it the distance, and hit enter. And you're going to see that that's going to be a really nice, easy method for you.